this fantastic idea to start a graduate school, which was originated from, from Tula Terry, hopefully will lead to a completely new generation of, of students with a unique uh, expertise. This, this graduate school is a build on top up education program, course program, that will supply a very unique type of, of, of knowledge and education for an already enrolled PhD student in a different field. This emphasizes the, the very cross-disciplinary character of, of the school, that we, we really welcome students from completely different areas to, to add on this module to their expertise and make them start thinking about how can I use this knowledge together with my research in my home institute to, to come up with something completely new. So my expectation is really that, that these students will use this knowledge implemented with their, their own knowledge from their, from their PhD project and out of it should come something really interesting and new that I cannot foresee because b really this is something for the new and younger scientists to really pave the way for the future. I'm a postdoc and I work for Biomime here at KTH and we are interested in cloning, expressing and purifying membrane proteins to afterwards crystallize them and to, to refine their crystal structures. Mm -hmm. So we are in particular interested in enzymes of the family GT2, which stands for glycosyl transferase 2, family 2. These enzymes take an activated glucose unit and transport them onto different other oligo or polysaccharides for the synthesis of polysaccharides in the cell wall. A very important member of this family GT2 is for example cellulose synthase A, which is important for the synthesis of cellulose in the cell wall. So what we do, we take different GT2s, different proteins of this family, we clone them, we subclone them from different organisms, from the genomic DNA of either eukaryotic or prokaryotic organisms. We clone them in different vectors in between to finally end up in a GFP fusion vector. And then we try to express those constructs in first E. coli, where we use different strains like BL21, C41, different other ones. Uh, where we want to see the fluorescent product integrated in the membrane. And if this doesn't work, we will go higher to eukaryotic host cells like uh, Pichia, Pastores or Saccharomyces to see if we can express them there. In case we have a good expression, we will use different detergents to find out a good way to solubilize these membrane proteins which have membrane, transmembrane helices in the membrane. And then we try to purify and crystallize those. And since Christina is a very experienced crystallographer, she will then try to solve the crystal structure of these and the, and the structure of these proteins. And this is the main task we want to do in Biomem. I'm the director of the Graduate School in Biomimetic Fiber Engineering, and I've been part of the whole process from the planning to the actual execution. And in this work, I have Henrik Asperborg as my helping hand as the coordinator of the Biomimetic Fiber fiber engineering school. The process has, has been, been very, very interesting and exciting and included everything from, from making the course program to, to actually making sure that we have a nice uh, home page and, uh, and uh, a nice set of, of courses to offer the students. Of course, I would like to mention the fantastic work that we've had from the KTH Learning Lab in not only setting up the home base, but also uh, preparing our course and courses, I should say, with uh, relevant and high-level pedagogical content, which is really important to, to have a state-of-the-art modern graduate school today. The graduate school is also unique because it offers the possibility to study the, the program uh, as a distance program meaning that, that most courses have considerable parts that are possible to study remote from the actual education site. I'm a postdoc with Christina's group of, um, as part of BioMind. Um, I'm from Singapore and I came here about three years ago. Um, my work is mainly involved in crystallography, so I'm supposed to produce the proteins, crystallize them and solve the structure for them. So what we can do with this information is to try and, um, one, redesign the protein so as to change the active site to accept different types of substrates, or two, find inhibitors for these proteins if 
um, there's a need to inhibit them for various medical or application reasons. When it comes to biomime and biomimetics, I think this is particularly interesting for a, a curious person because then you start to cross borders and you start to, to, uh, to challenge yourself with thinking outside the box and trying to, to, to reach into other areas and apply your own research in, into other prob onto other problems, which is, is really the type of challenge that I like. What I like about the work we do here is that we get to work with um, this GT2 family of proteins. It's a, fam it's a family of proteins that produces long carbohydrate chains. So what we are looking for is to engineer these proteins to produce different types of um, carbohydrates that are not naturally found in nature. And this can be useful both in a medical field and in the material science area. Um, one of the targets is actually a hyaluronin synthase which is um, a protein that is producing um, hyaluronin as a polymer that is used a lot in medical fields. And if we can engineer the proteins to produce um, different types of hyaluronin, it will have interesting medical applications. In my work with, uh, with enzyme engineering, we have been quite successful and it's an ongoing successful collaboration with the uh, Austrian group we have managed to, to tailor an enzyme for completely new reactions. This particular enzyme is not yet implemented in, in the biomimetic context because we should remember that many of the, of, of the projects we, we, we do and, and the research that we have to do is basic research aiming to be applicable uh, within a certain time. So uh, most of the time we cannot immediately use the information for a new product or a new, new type of, of application. Uh, in this case of, of uh, the enzyme pyranose oxidase, we are actually very, very close to, to being able to, to use it in biofuel cells, for instance. It's not a biomimetic application, it's another relevant application, but the enzyme as such is also very, very good for attaching and modifying different groups on carbohydrate polymers, so it can be nicely fitted into the biomimetic uh, engineering of, of, of fibers. Um, so that is a, certainly a highlight that, that is uh, worth to mention. In this approach, what is really interesting to do is the, the enzymes we work on, the, the, the structures we want to get on, would help to understand the synthesis of cell wall per se, which is a very hot topic worldwide, because nobody really understands how this cellulose and the hemocellulose are really interacting. We don't really know how this is produced and it's very important to see how it works to finally find a way to degrade it for, for example, for biofuels or bioethanol production for the biodegradable, to, to get biodegradable things out of cellulose and, and hemocellulose we have on this planet. Our ultimate vision is, of course, that we should be able to attract students from all over the world with different ethnical backgrounds and educational backgrounds. And I think this is possible with the type of, of, of program that we're designing here.